Welcome back to Schmetz Outdoors, everyone. Um, just kind of getting ready to go for the morning. It is chilly out here. Uh, it's went down two degrees even in the hour I've been up or last 45 minutes I've been up. Uh, it's 15 degrees out here right now. I think it's supposed to cool off another degree or two here kind of as the sun rises. Um, high is only like in the mid 20s today. So, I mean, pretty stark contrast to yesterday when the highs were in the mid 40s. So, uh, wind's been blowing all night. Northwest winds like 10 to 15 all night. That's why it got so cold. We're gonna pull the whole water line today. Uh, again, mink boxes will leave because they'll still be working. Pocket sets and uh, muskrat poles all gonna probably get yanked today. Um, <clears throat> even if a slough is open, I was thinking about leaving it, but leaving a, like a pocket set, but I think we're gonna end up pulling them anyway because it's not supposed to get above freezing basically for the next like 72 hours. So if they're not frozen now, they're gonna be frozen. So, I mean, it's gonna probably put ice on during the day today. So yeah, it's chilly out here. It's gonna be a cold day on the line, pulling the line, but or pulling the water line anyway, getting wet. Um, try to minimize that. The pocket sets, the nice thing is, um, I can stand on shore and pull them. It's just a matter of how much ice I'm gonna have to break to get them out. It's gonna be just ice right by the shore. So, you know, the cattails might help insulate it a little bit. So there might not be quite as much right up by shore, but some of them I think are gonna be bad. I think, you know, there's gonna be a half an inch plus the snow or ice by them. I did throw in a baseball bat today to help not beat on the ice necessarily, but just something to kind of push on the ice, something solid, you know, you just kind of lean on it and push next to your sets or whatever to kind of bust the ice up. So I did throw that in. Otherwise I didn't do anything different with the truck than what I had going on yesterday. Um, I cleaned out most of the, maybe I didn't really show this yesterday, but I cleaned out, I got just a couple of spare coyote traps, uh, a couple of spare raccoon traps up in that, where the icebreaker stuff is. And then this is gonna be muskrat traps that we're pulling today. Um, we're gonna, like I said, all the, we're gonna try and take apart the mink sets. It's gonna be cold. We'll see when I get out on the line if I, you know, keep doing that. But um, all I gotta do is basically just unhook the, uh, there's a deer out here. I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see her or not. But. As I'm talking, there's a deer right out here. It's kind of behind this bigger tree with the Y in there now. Yeah, there you can see. Looks like just a big doe. It's kind of right out here, right above the beehives. Imagine me talking has probably spooked her. I, well, I did look a couple times this morning to see if there's anything out on the food plot out here, but um, but yeah, we're gonna try and take the mink sets apart, uh, take the traps off the drowning cables, take the plates off the drowning cables for sure, 100% I'm gonna be doing that. Um, and then try and coil the uh, drowning cables up a little bit just so they're not all tangled together in one big blob. Yeah, otherwise, like I said, I think that's about it. It's gonna be a kind of a chilly day on the line, I think, so. I try to feel like there's something else. I, oh, the wind, um, wind and temperatures, it's colder. I feel like that might help the, you know, coyotes, the canines get up and moving around a little bit, but it was windy, so I don't know if that's gonna kind of affect things a little bit or not here, but. You never know, like I said, we'll, we'll get out there, see, hopefully we got some catches for you. With the wind blowing all night, I think that's gonna kind of damper down any of the water movement, the muskrats in particular. So I don't expect really to have any muskrat catches, but you know, unless say I got, got caught, you know, yesterday afternoon, just going into the evening before stuff froze up. So I don't know. So hopefully, like I said, the water line has been kind of carrying my line here lately, so. 
let's see hopefully we got something caught for you let's get out on the line all right guys so we're uh making it through the line i got two of my mink sets uh pulled there's a decent amount of ice uh it's not been as bad as i've thought so until i got to this slough so i had some uh pole sets down this way and i got my mink box and stuff set by the culvert over here and we'll show you that but the sets down this way the ice had blown in here hard enough it actually tipped over my uh, 110 completely over so my pole is completely under the ice there's like an inch of ice or so and then the other one uh, my foothold pole was leaning like that and i had actually put like a toilet set down there but ever since the wind's been blowing in here you know like 15 miles an hour ever since i put it there but i do have a catch we're not skunked and i did catch a shrew in a weasel box on our land there and i didn't film it for you guys and then once i got back in the truck i'm like oh you idiot that might have been my only catch but that's not true so my mink box here is actually set off i'm like well that's kind of odd but the trap is laying right in front of the box but i had these two trail sets one's right uh, one's right here and one's right here and you can see that's a muskrat in my uh, trail set and i don't know if that guy set off my mink box Ooh, she's frozen good and solid but you guys can see the muskrat in there i'm pretty sure that's a muskrat i don't know we'll bust the ice and get him out of here and then we'll turn you guys back on and then we'll have to see if i can get my uh my mink box is right here We'll have to see if I can get my uh, trap out of the ice and get it reset. I'll leave the mink box here because I have raccoon sets in the woods right over here that I'll still be checking even though chances of catching a raccoon is pretty slim. But I got to basically come by here anyway. So I drive, uh, I'll check them too and then I can stop and check this mink box. But let me uh, get my uh, uh, icebreaker and we'll see if I can bust the ice around this catch here. Uh, either way that muskrat will be riding around in the truck any water animals are going to be froze if I leave them in the back so all right I'll get this guy out here and then I'll turn you guys back on oh my gosh guys so I'm still by this set here I just got uh, my two uh, 110s chopped out of here that is no muskrat that's a mink a little female mink I bet caught in this little trail set here even when I was looking at the back, it looked like muskrat there, but I wasn't real sure. I th think even in my thing, you c I, I believe I said, I think that's a, a muskrat. But bingo, bingo, we got ourselves a mink. That's the second one, but this is not a mink set, so I'm still kind of like, oh, man. Because I want to catch up in my mink set so badly. But I'll take a mink caught in my uh, trail set here. Again, we're going to pull these two trail sets. Uh, we're going to see, hopefully I can get this mink off of the pole. So what I did is I chopped a ways around him in the ice to try not and hurt the fur. Um, wish I had something to stick him in. We'll figure out something here so I ain't getting all the wet in my truck here. But anyway, we got ourselves a mink. I don't know if you guys could see him that well, but little female mink the way it looks i mean i'm just guessing female just by the size it's not not a very big mink there you go i got it off the pole now i can show you guys a little better little mink there heck yeah second one for the season glad to have it on the pole day of the water one like i said i'm gonna see if i can get this mink box remade uh right here's where i had a muskrat eight in this exact same set the muskrat was chewed on and then i stuck him inside my box here and this trap is set off so i'm wondering if that mink wasn't here set off my mink box and then got caught in that trail set there but we're gonna try and get that mink box remade heck yeah we got ourselves a mink what what saved a few muskrats lives that's for sure i said i don't want to be moving him around too much because this ice is pulling on his fur so 
All right, we'll see if I can get that one reset and we'll get this mink and everything in the truck and give him a free ride home. Heck yeah. I thought it was a muskrat. Like I said, just looking at the back, I thought it was just kind of a gray colored muskrat. You know, and the size of what I could see there looks like muskrats. So as soon as I pull out of the water, I'm like, oh, I can't believe I, I should have had you guys after I got him chopped loose. I should have turned you guys back on. But I thought, oh, it's just a muskrat. We'll get him out and then I'll show you. But yeah, got myself a mink. All right. Like I said, we'll get that set remade if I can. And then we'll get the heck out of here because I'm cold. It's chilly out here and that wind is raw. Let's see if I can find uh, something to stick him in. What I did, and I think I'm going to dump them out. I'm not taking the traps off of the drowning cables. I was just throwing them in this pail. But I think we're going to dump these out and throw that mink in there. Just so if that ice and stuff all melts, which it probably will in my truck, it doesn't uh, make a big wet spot in my truck. So I guess that's a good problem to have. Yeah, got me a catch, got me a mink. All right, I'm getting cold. We'll get everything uh, situated here and we'll get on our way. I'm cold. Well, I'm a little chilled now. It took me a, a bit to get that mink set chopped out and get it reset. I had a hard time getting it it back in my box and I, I don't know just a struggle but mink box is reset i had one coyote set set off well deer stepped in it got that remade what i have is a chunk of grass on this side of the road and this little ditch that essentially runs to a bigger slough down there got a weasel box here i could see my trap was set off and bam we got ourselves a mouse so there's already one in the back I probably should be keeping these for bait for something, but we'll get that little guy out of there. So that's a shrew and a mouse now in my weasel boxes this morning. So fortunately, a shrew and a mouse, you know, don't uh, help out in the first shed at all. But we'll get this guy out of there and get moved on. I'm chilled. I got to be in the truck and warm up a little bit now. Luckily, we don't have a lot of water sets just right away here. So a few coyote sets to check so I can warm up a bit. All right, everyone, well, did not expect this, but glad to have it. Uh, got another catch here. We're gonna get out and show you what's going on here. Um, I'm right out in the wide open here. I mean, it's wide open field as far as you can see, except for over here on this side. Hopefully my truck is going to block a little of the wind. Of course, I didn't park real close and I don't want to be right next to it anyway. So uh, what we got here, this is a little chunk of CRP grass. It's like a hundred yards square right on the corner of two roads here. And because of that, I have my sets on slide chains. I made, I used to have cables. I had eighth inch cables and that worked very well. But I thought, well, they kept twisting them up. Every time you kept made a catch, it twisted up a little bit. So if you made one catch, essentially, you had to remake it for the next year. So I made chains, and last year I had them here, and I never made a single catch with the chains. So what I did is I left these two chains. I actually made three of them, but there's two here. I left them hang outside on the front of my trap and shed all summer, well, basically for the last year. And then now... This is the third catch I've made here. I had a double here before. I had a coyote caught in one set and a uh, badger caught in the other set. Um, today I just got a coyote out here. I'll ruin, the sp ruin it for you. I got a coyote out here. I don't know if you guys could, could be able to see him, but he's right here. I know you're looking into the sun. We're gonna get out and I'll show you what's going on here a little better, but just to ex trying to explain a little bit so I don't have to one, stand out in the cold and two, so you guys can actually hear me. Cause like I said, it's blowing, I think 18 last I looked. So out of the Northwest here. So I'm surprised I made any canine catches with the wind blowing that hard. Cause it's been blowing like that all night. So I do want to make a point I had, uh, them muskrat sets and a mink set by that big culvert but in that big slough i thought i was going to be able to weave those especially the muskrat sets there 
but man, the ice was actually like three or four feet into the culvert on both ends. So even with the wind blowing and it like funnels it through that culvert, I figured, well, the, because it funnels it through there, it'll keep that water open, you know, and then like, I think just from being under the road, that helps like the air temperature underneath there stay a little bit warmer as well, but it didn't matter today. So I guess we pulled that. So I think we're gonna end up pulling every water set. Uh, we'll leave the mink boxes out. I don't foresee leaving any water sets now. Those are the only ones. And I had one other trail set that was uh, where the mink kept eating my uh, muskrat right before I pulled my line the first time. I thought I was gonna be able to leave. I put a muskrat set back in there a couple days ago. Um, I thought I was gonna leave that one, but that one was like a quarter inch ice and that little channel going between the two sloughs. So yeah, like I said, we're gonna end up with a few mink boxes out. I left one, I got one kind of trail set for mink set. Um, that's a dry land set where they're going from one side of the road to the other. I'm pretty sure it'd be like a mink trail or muskrat trail, but right now it'd be a mink only trail, I would think. So I'm gonna have like one mink set out and four mink boxes. Um, yeah, I do have a couple boxes in my truck, but I'm going to be pulling them in two days anyway. Um, yeah, because we're going to pull all the boxes on Saturday, and then we'll pull the whole rest of the main line on Sunday. So anyway, all right. So just a little rundown. Yeah, so we're going to be have zero water sets out after I get done today, um, other than a couple mink boxes. So um, still could pick up a mink here. I just can't seem to catch them in a mink box. We're gonna do some modifications of them in the off season, but anyway. All right, enough stalling. We'll get out here um, and show you the catch here, show you kind of the setup I got going on here, and then we'll get this guy taken care of, and I'm probably gonna be pretty chilled after this, but we'll get him out of here, and we're halfway through the line, if not a little more. Yeah, I would say, well, maybe two thirds of the way through the line. Uh, I don't know, halfway probably. Let's go. Ugh. All right, again, so what we got is just this little square CRP on the corner. This guy's land here. There's a gravel road literally right there and one right over here. So what I have is I have two sets here. I had one dirt, a dirt hole right here, and then I actually just got a flat set right here, baited with gusto and uh, caster. And then this chain here runs out at an angle, and what I do is I just have this post right next to my chain here. You can see the chain is right there. So if an animal goes by, they just bump this, it's gonna lean it over. Um, and I could see this one was leaning a little yesterday, but I could tell there was no catch here but I couldn't see the second post today. And I'm not even sure where it is here. But this coyote, he's front foot caught, but man, he really knocked down a huge area here. I, I don't know if he didn't slide down the cable all the, or the chain all the way to begin with or what, but I'm not so sure as far as he got here, I'm not so sure if I had a catch because this one here is staked, I don't know, right here somewhere is the end of it. I don't even know. Oh, it's right over here. So it's staked here. These two catches probably could get close enough to each other. And I wonder if that ain't why the badger was over here in this hole pulling away from the coyote I had here the other day. But that coyote is caught about as deep as you could get caught in an MB550. Um, but yeah, he's definitely got all the grass knocked down here. Decent looking coyote again. He's good size, big size coyote. Uh, playing timid, I, the, my wind is blowing towards him, so that usually kind of settles him down a little bit, but nice to have on a day like today. I'd expected zero catches today. I, I'll be flat honest with you, so the fact I'm going home with this guy and going home with that mink already uh, turning out to be an okay day on the line. Uh, so yeah, what I have, like I said, just a chain right here. What I do... For this dirt hole, 
my trap bed is here I kind of put my dirt hole off to the side and then I'll dig like a little trench and kind of bury the first foot or more of this chain and like my shock spring and everything is all laying kind of next to my and then my trap here with the this kind of tucked underneath the jaw of the trap you know and I have to have this at an angle because I can't have my dirt hole right where my chain is you know obviously and that's actually where like a flat set like this actually works really nice because you bury everything. So my chain is going right out here, but I have it kind of buried this far back, you know, to kind of, I guess, hopefully, you know, hide it a little bit so they don't notice it. But this one's going to be fairly noticeable now because he's got the grass all knocked down. But all right, one last quick look at him here. And like I said, we'll get him out of there. I don't know if you could see his foot in there, but his foot is actually bent like this because he's got his foot so deep into that trap that I don't think he can't. I don't think they could get their foot any deeper in there. So he was fully committed to that set. Um, one thing I'll mention with these two sets. So I put them both on this side. This is the north side of this grass. This is east over this way. With the idea that they're gonna run along the edge here anyway but my scent of these two traps kind of cut the corner of this so i'm actually sort of protected with a predominant northwest wind in my area so northwest is gonna blow this way but the scent of these two traps is blowing kind of around the corner of this uh grass and i don't know i figured that out a long time ago that you don't have to have a set over on that side and a set on this side to guard both sides you can have your set on one side and it kind of cuts the corner and then this set here has gusto on it which is a real strong skunk smelling lure so that also sort of kind of brings them around the corner this one here had minnesota red on there which is a little bit tamed down it's like a red fox gland type of lure you know so it's a little bit more mellow set in case you know they don't want that real super strong skunk smell so uh, but yeah so that that one there i put that one purposely beyond it because again that strong skunk smell is blowing and that hopefully will bring them around and bingo catch them in this set all right i'm getting cold already we'll get this guy out of here and we'll get back in the truck All right guys, so we're uh, a couple sets down. I checked a couple raccoon sets since I had that coyote. We're by this little slough here. This is the mink box that I had the weasel caught in. You know, he messed with me the first day and then I caught him the second day, but my trap is sprung way over here with the uh, what's left of the muskrat carcass stuck in there. And my box has been kind of turned. That cattail wasn't cut off like that, I'm pretty sure. But what we're gonna do here, I got uh, some fresh bait. We're gonna rebait this guy, and hopefully, uh, maybe if a mink is in here, or if I start having my, uh, what looks to be weasel issues again, we'll uh, put a weasel box here instead of this mink box. But yeah, mink box set off again. Nothing in there, so. Like I said, we'll rebait it. I got this is the hind legs of a muskrat. I kept off of a muskrat a few days ago just for a situation like this. Um, I got a couple extra ones in my truck just to rebait some of my mink boxes if they run out of bait or if something like this happens. So, all right, we'll get this remade up here again and be on our way. I'm cold, cold now. I should have worn almost my Carhartt bibs but I didn't think it was going to be this bad and I didn't want to get them all wet so but I don't know hindsight's 2020 we're not froze to death yet if I was I'd be sitting in the truck warming up but we'll get this guy reset I gotta use my setters to set that 120 it's just the way the springs are you can't get the spring eye over the center uh, rivet of the trap and I can't hardly squeeze it and get the uh, safety catch on this one without having the setters so it's only 120 I know I just can't get it set but all right we'll get her rebated here and move on all right everyone it was cold out there today but <clears throat> pushed through got everything done I hope to get done 
made a couple catches for you guys which excited about both of them to be honest with you you know I wish I could have could have got that mink in that mink box you know a set purposely set for the mink but you know a trail set's probably just as good um, but anyway yeah I mean I'm assuming I missed him in the mink box or something happened there and I don't know when he spooked he run into the other set or he was still curious and ended up in the other set right next to it there anyway so happy surprise I thought I had a muskrat there and bingo caught myself the second mink of the season it is a little female and we'll show you down I got him hanging in the basement here we're just gonna go over the truck a little bit here uh, and then we're gonna go down in the basement um, so I did some cleaning already so I took my waders out of the inside of here uh, my raincoat was still in here I didn't need that in there all the muskrat mink um, lures that I use you know like I have I never used any of the mink lure I wanted to kind of give my pocket sets a true test of just bait you know and I don't know like next year most likely when I'm putting these sets out I'll probably dab a little bit of lure on there the only thing I do need to watch one of my sets the pocket sets my bait was actually completely cleaned out of my pipe so I'm assuming it had to be a weasel right there. Um, I know where it is. I, I could move one of my boxes there, but I'm not going to. Uh, but yeah, I was a little surprised by that. Most of them still have all the baits frozen there. I can't get the bait out of them. But so I just got all the pockets, portable pockets stacked up here. All the plates piled in a pile here. I'm sure they might even be froze together. And then I did not take the traps off of the cables while I was out on the line so I made a uh, pile of them in here only because I was going to throw them in that bucket but I ended up using the bucket for my mink because I didn't want to just throw him in and I'm glad I didn't because there's quite a bit of water in that pail so I gladly untangle that mess because I got that mink in there to take care of so uh, yeah, so all of this stuff, most of these poles are all going to get taken out of there, all the top ones and then all these longer ones. All these, I'll maybe leave a few of those in there. I don't know really what for at this point, but we're going to leave a few. Um, so yeah, portable pockets, all the plates. Right here is all the muskrat sets. These are the bait clips for them. Kind of up here in the front, I threw some of the the clips I use for some of the 110s are kind of they're all in the front up in here underneath tangled and all this stuff so before I move my truck I'm going to actually go through and take all the traps off of the cables and get the cables wound up it's just going to be a little bit uh, a little bit easier to store it's not terribly windy right here in the yard I mean you can see the trees are moving up here but it's not bad in the yard compared to what it was on the line so it's just it's going to take me 10 minutes and i'll have them all cleaned up here you know we're taken care of uh this guy i can take out of here i didn't even use it the ice was too thick on most of the set so i ended up using my pull bar because my pull bar is kind of set up like an ice chisel as well so i used the pull bar to chop the ice around them some of them like it was better than an inch of ice. I literally stood on the one and it didn't break through the ice until I kind of bounced just a little and then it kind of cracked and then I moved and then I used my foot just kind of stomp the ice out of the way. But that was one of the first ones and then after that I just used this to chop the ice. So way easier than trying hammering it. So the baseball bat, my wood icebreaker here who's in pretty sad shape. We're going to have to upgrade him do something different but you can see it cracked my board you know and I wired it somewhat back together but it's froze together right now but this should be sticking straight so it should be like straight up this way you know just from pushing this board it's all moving now so we'll have to do something a little bit better a little different with that guy I have it uh, marked down as one of the projects for the off season it definitely don't have to be right now so yeah all of this stuff this tote that bag all that stuff these are all drowning rigs here 
Um, I have an extra one for a portable pocket, and those are all like beaver ones, you know, with bigger slide. You know, they got the bigger slides on there than what this one has. I figured for mink, I don't need a huge, uh, the bigger size. So I made a bunch of these ones just for mink trap, and they have smaller uh, sliders on them. So those can come out of here. So yeah, I mean, we're going to have pretty good empty truck here. And then we'll go down in the basement. So I've told you this before, like you got to watch like on coyotes and stuff. It hasn't even been that long, since, like two hours maybe since I caught that coyote. But his nose and his feet were all froze. So I brought him down in the basement here. So I don't know, like here, like his foot is froze. Oh, it moves just a little. But his nose was froze rock hard. It's still froze rock hard. So we're gonna have to let him hang for, his body's warm. And I guess like his back feet now are soft, but they're in the highest part of the room here. So they're gonna be warm and the furnace is running. So uh, long as we're here, nice looking coyote, pretty well furred again. You know, nice as the one yesterday. Got a couple burrs right here in the neck, but otherwise pretty clean. Um, we're gonna get him skinned. I don't know if we're gonna flesh tonight or not. It is Thanksgiving Day today, so guy may just take a break. But because I did a bunch of work yesterday anyway. But yeah, so we got one nice coyote. I kind of I didn't say it before we went out on the line, but I was surprised. I I should have said that I'd have been surprised if we made any catches today water line or the land line to be honest with the way the winds 15 plus mile an hour winds all night is not conducive to making catches on your trap line period um, whether it's warm wind cold winds it, it just is not conducive to making catches on the line so the fact i made any catches today is kind of a surprise but I, i'll take it and I got a nice coyote to go with it he's not robbed anything again he's probably about as prime as he's gonna get prime as she's gonna get so that's the third female I've got in a row now um, I've got 11 males caught and four females now for 15 total so yeah kind of I mentioned this before I think I'm pretty sure I mentioned on one of these videos that I seem like I catch a lot of males early in the season and then towards the end I switch and I start catching females and I don't know like now that it cools off or is gonna get cold and stay cold if all of the animals start moving around a little more or if the males are a little more solitary to begin with you know especially like pups and that type of stuff uh, if like the female pups stay with the main you know the dominant female or the mother and the males go move around I just I don't know what really causes that uh, if you guys know that or have noticed it on your line uh, comment down below I'd like to kind of hear what you guys think about that but kind of interesting thing that happens it happens every year and this year it's been actually a little more lopsided than normal I was at uh, 11 males to two females there and now, now I'm up to four females so uh, yeah and then sort of the trophy of the day he's still got some serious ice on him I don't want to try and too much force because it's pulling on the hair in there we'll turn him this way it, you know it's really caught in his hair there so I don't want to like get too aggressive trying to peel that ice off of there and pull hair out and then he's froze into the trap up here oh that place is broke finally this was froze into the trap so I couldn't even got him out of the trap I don't think um, it's a little mink significantly smaller yeah I would say a female for sure um, so yeah excited to have him kind of wish again would have caught it in like a dedicated mink set, but I'll take it in a trail set just the same. A mink is a mink. Kind of part of the reason why I really wanted to focus on mink this year is, you know, I like catching muskrats. I really do. They're, they're easy to catch. You could catch a pile of them in a day if you really don't get frozen, but it, you could catch a pile of them in a day if you really go at it. You know, if you got good spots. 
I think there's a lot of them around, so I'm hoping they have a good winter here and uh, good summer next summer. And man, I think we should be able to pile up muskrats next year if we get some open water trapping, which isn't guaranteed. But every mink I catch, I feel like like 25 muskrats that's going to make it in the, you know to next year's season. So in a year from now, is this mink going to kill 25 muskrats? Whether that's adults. Um, killing young ones you know getting into a hut and killing the young ones in the spring or whenever they have young ones or actually killing you know all summer long you know killing muskrats catching them or whatever you know and this little one maybe not as much but right here is this big one so that it was a big male and he is past the 2x line on the board in length you know and just gonna try and get him flipped up here I mean obviously this one's not stretched but you know you look at the size comparison between the two of those you know this the one I caught today is maybe two-thirds the length of what this one is if that you know it's hardly half to be honest but you know you go from the nose to the base of the tail there it's hardly half and that, get, don't get me wrong, this is a giant mink. Like I said, he's well past the 2XL line, and I did not stretch him. He's literally just, he was loose on that board, and he's still not really even sucked down tight on there. He's probably about ready to come off. I'll probably take him off tomorrow. This is a skunk, the last skunk I caught. I fleshed him the other night, the same night I fleshed, uh, I got two badgers. This is the last one I caught. It's quite a bit nicer furred than this one here. They look a little rough, but they'll fluff up when I uh, take them off the board. This is this one here I had, I left a little bit longer. And man, I should have just turned it when I turned that one. I had a heck of a time getting that guy turned, but. Yeah, and then I have every muskrat that I've caught this season is put up. Um, you know, or the ones that weren't tore up or you know, chewed up by mink. So everything from right here this way, I'm gonna take off the stretchers today. These were the last three. Uh, this was the last one I caught, and then those two were the day before. I'm gonna leave those probably one more day, again with this mink and this guy. Over here, I got a couple beavers. Uh, they were spring caught beaver. No, this, yeah, spring caught beaver these two and I got one more fleshed outside so I'll give this guy maybe actually he's probably real close I probably could put the one on the other side of this board now if I if they're too soft and you flip them over they will make a big bubble like that and they won't dry right so I probably again maybe leave that guy one more day and then I'll flip him and put the be another beaver on the opposite side of this guy and leave the other the new one on the top again so he dries nice and flat um, yeah, so a couple beaver, a bunch of muskrats, one skunk, and two badgers is what I got put up so far. Yo, and I haven't, I'm purposely not, well, yeah, I'm purposely not putting up a lot of fur right now. Um, I mean, like, the last couple days I put up some fur, uh, the beavers and the badgers, just because I did have a little extra time here. But kind of the idea is, you know, I'm trapping right now. I don't want to be, if you know, obviously, if if I had catches on the line, I'd rather be taking care of the line than down here fleshing stuff right now. And I also don't want to run the line until dark and then be down here for three hours fleshing every night. You know, you just wear yourself out so quickly. You know, and I'm wore out right now. That's part of it too. Is I'm just I'm beat up from running the line and from the mule deer trip. So it just, it doesn't do you any good just to keep beating yourself up day after day. You need to take a little break and rest. So like I said, like this coyote, I'd really like to get him fleshed and put up, um, but I don't know, we'll, we'll see. Again, it is Thanksgiving today, so I, I don't, it is a holiday. I don't want to use that as an excuse, but I sort of am going to use that as an excuse for now, so. Otherwise, yeah, let's kind of go over the next couple days here. So I did leave 
One mink set in our pasture in the little creek. The creek's moving just enough. I left five muskrat sets in the one mink set down there. Uh, I imagine that, like tomorrow I'll probably end up pulling a couple more of the muskrat sets. One was froze in and I couldn't really find a good spot to put it. The bottom is hard in some spots and then it's like muck in the next spot. So I couldn't really find a good spot to put it. So I ended up pulling the one. My mink set was still working good. So I, I'll leave my mink set as long as I possibly can down there. There was, right where I put it, there was actually mink tracks in the mud right there. So I know a mink has gone through there, you know, fairly recently here. So I'm just kind of hoping maybe he'll come back and we can actually catch another mink. So I'm, I'm ecstatic that I got two caught, to be honest with you. Granted, this guy's not huge. But I'll take him, gosh darn it. I mean, that was kind of my goal for the season right there is to catch mink this year. Two is in a bunch. Some of you guys I know probably put up hundreds of them. I'm not that guy. I don't know crap about trapping mink, so I'm trying to learn here. Um, and I'm just kind of bringing you guys along for the ride. Yeah, so like I said, pretty successful season so far, like I said. I, but uh next cu up couple days today's thursday on saturday we'll be pulling all the mink boxes and the weasel boxes and then on sunday we'll be pulling the entire line other than a few right around our our farm here i will most likely leave um i can check them with before or after work without having to run the entire line every day because it's taken me like four and a half, five hours to run the whole line right now. It'll be a little less now that I'm not water trapping, but you know, if you tried to work a full-time job and then run that, you know, in the dark essentially is when you'd be checking it. I just, it's not worth it. And as you can tell, you know, the catches on my line have slowed way down. It's going to be basically canines and maybe a badger only right now. So yeah, so I guess that's what it is, like I said, a couple more days uh, of having the boxes out, and then like I said, we'll be pulling uh, the boxes on Saturday, main line on Sunday. So three more checks here. Hopefully we can uh, catch some more for you, for you guys. I feel like we've kind of talked long enough here, so we're gonna let you guys go. I appreciate you guys riding around with me. I'm. Glad I've been making a few catches for you. I had the one day where I didn't catch nothing. I apologize for that, but it's just if the animals don't move, the animals don't move. With that said, tonight the wind's supposed to die down. It's you know it's supposed to get cold. It's supposed to be like in the like around 10, 11 degrees for a low tonight. That should get the canines moving around. If there if there's canines to move, they should be moving tonight. So I can't guarantee. I'm not gonna call my shot that I'm gonna have one caught again tomorrow, but there's a good chance we got one caught tomorrow. So I haven't caught a fox yet this year either. So, you know, it'd be kind of cool to actually do that. But all right, that's all I got for you guys. We'll see you out on the line tomorrow.